Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living in Southeast Louisiana. I'm Reverend Larry Marie Heil, and we're a group of radically inclusive spiritual renegades, healing hearts and creating community, and living from that place of conscious spiritual living. Today, we have a great topic. It's called Relationships. We're in a series called Chop Wood, Carry Water. Each week is independent, and so I hope you'll stick around today and join us for uh, more insight into how our relationships can become more joyful and more connected. Let's begin with prayer. We just take a deep, nourishing breath. And what I know is that God or the divine or spirit or your guide or your higher self, whatever you call that essence of the big, overwhelmingly generous and loving and calm and peaceful beingness, that that God lives right within us. That each of us is an expression of that divine. We have the love, the wisdom, the joy right within us. And what I know is that we are here today by divine appointment, that there is some reason that we decided to show up and to watch this video on relationships. There might be a message from God in the reading and the music and the message itself in one of the quotes, but there is a reason that each of us had made the choice to be here in community today. So I am grateful. I'm grateful for that choice. I'm grateful for this community. I'm grateful for the connections that we have that allow us to expand our spirituality. And it's from all that gratitude that I release these words into the law of mind, spirit, and action. I know the truth. God's already called it good. So I can say amen, and we can affirm it together. And so it is. And our opening song is one of my favorite. It's called Peace Like a River. Stand up and do some of the hand motions. It's a lot of fun. celebration and healing. Our time in our service where we celebrate life and we pray for people who desire prayer. We begin with celebration, so I invite you to say aloud so that the whole universe can hear it, any event in your life for which you're grateful and joyful this week.
And now we turn to the healing portion of our service. We're a community steeped in healing. So we pause now to pray for anyone who's not feeling the joy of life that we perhaps were just feeling. They're not feeling maybe that they have things to celebrate. And I truly love this part of our service because it's so in alignment with who we are. So let's pray. God is all there is. God is that love and that peace and ease and grace and freedom and so much more. And as an individual expression of the divine, each of us have within us all of these qualities of spirit. They're available to us right here and right now. And what I know to be the truth is that there are people on this planet right now that aren't embracing those qualities. So we stop for a moment and we create a circle of love. And in this community, we place in that circle of love anyone that we recognize within ourselves or for someone else that might need prayer. So I'm gonna pause and I just invite you to say aloud the names of all of those people that you wanna include in our circle of love. I know that God is right where each of us happens to be, right here and right now, moving in through and as each of us. And I know that the divine has heard every name that we spoke, either in our hearts or aloud. And what I'd like you to do now is pause again, and from your heart to all of theirs, just send out love, knowing that the divine knows exactly how to distribute it. And what I know to be the truth is that anything that needs to be released within each of these people is being released now, be it disease of the mind, of the body, of the soul. I know that anything that's seeking to come forth and be lifted up can be lifted up. And that this release and this lifting up is healing whatever's called to be healed. I know that each of these people is feeling more deeply their connection with the divine right now. I have evidence of that, and I know it to be the truth for everyone that we place in our circle. So I'm so grateful to know that the God without is the God within me. The God without is the God within every person in our circle, every person in this community, and every person on this planet. And I'm grateful for that power of community prayer and what it means to the uplifting of the people on this planet. So it's from all that gratitude that I release this prayer into the law of mind, spirit, and action. Because I know that the divine, in all of its wisdom, has already called all of this good. Any heavy lifting that needs to be done to heal whatever needs to be healed, the divine is already taken care of. So I can just know it's already done, say amen, and together we can affirm it. And so it is. I invite you to join me for our community affirmation. My life's purpose is already within me, and I am committed to its unfoldment. I am here by divine appointment to join in a community that cares for one another, to be in a place that transforms people's lives, to remember the highest truth about myself, to learn spiritual tools for personal transformation, and thus to make the world a more joyful place. So this is our time for meditation. So I invite you to just let go of whatever has happened up until now, in this day, in this week. Just release that past. Let go of those thoughts of the future and just be present. Embrace the now. And we move into this time of meditation together with a beautiful song, Loving Kindness.
take a deep nourishing breath and as we breathe in we allow ourselves to be thankful for this day breathing in again and on the out breath letting go of anything that appears to be other than love releasing any part of your life that doesn't seem to be working for you right now and becoming fully present to just this present moment. Allow yourself to settle in. Feel the peace of letting go of everything other than this present moment. Know that God is right where you are. And I invite you to remember a time in your life when it was altered by someone loving you in a special way. Perhaps it was a simple way, a loving kindness that made all the difference. Allow yourself to recapture those feelings, that sense of being loved, that sense of being cared about that sense of abundance of the good in your life. How often do we take time to breathe and remember that spirit shines through us, as us, in every moment of every day, healing whatever needs to be healed and lifting up all our joys. In Corinthians 9, 6, we read this. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. So think of your time in your life when you sowed generously. Maybe it was for a birthday or a special holiday. Perhaps it was just a card to let someone know you cared about them, a loving kindness. And remember how that felt. Did you feel an abundance of joy, of love, of peace, of accomplishment? Whatever the feeling, did you feel that your life was filled with love? Use this time of meditation to let go of any fear you have around these messages that are coming to you. Know all you need do is surrender to the power and the glory of the loving spirit which dwells in you. So as we return from the silence, 
bring back with you the guidance and the wisdom that was imparted to you. Feel yourself surrendering to the knowing that the divine is right where you are. See any request as being accomplished as a prayer that's filled with love and compassion. And remember, we are filled with loving kindness. We are well. We are happy and at ease. I'm Joanne Bewald, and I'm reading from Chop Wood and Carry Water. In the past, the dedicated spiritual seeker often chose to live a life apart from the distractions and temptations of the worldly life. By living outside the entanglements of the relationships, the spiritual speaker was left free to pursue a life of simplicity and non-attachment. This may have worked well enough for the monk, nun, hermit or wandering pilgrim, but for most of us today, our relationships, as distracting as they may be, are very much a part of our spiritual path. In fact, life is relationship, and we are all in a perfect relationship with everything that makes up our lives at this very moment. To feel this interconnectedness with all things and to know that we are part of a universe is one of the great joys of spiritual life. And it is our intimate relationships that provide the greatest opportunities to learn this lesson. Dante's love for Beatrice, for example, led him to conclude that the Paradiso with a peon to the love that moves the star, sun and other stars. In India, the love between the youthful flute-playing Krishna and maiden, maiden Radha symbolized the eternal attraction between the human world and the world of the gods. These relationships, though they may seem remote or mythological, remind us of the truth that there is a path of relationship, a path based on acknowledging and honoring the sacred sense and consciousness of our partners. To begin with, the same qualities that go to make up a fulfilling relationship, qualities such as love, commitment, forgiveness, surrender, and honesty, are also the qualities that contribute to our spiritual growth. Secondly, the nature of our spiritual lives is reflected very much in the quality of relationships we have. In this way, they become an accurate mirror. The people we spend most of our time with, who know us best, can give us immediate and generally reliable feedback about our lives. Relationships bring spirituality down to earth and into the home. Finally, the care and love we give others is actually at the heart of spirituality. Since there is, in fact, no separation between us, to give is to receive. As the Beatles sing, the love you take is equal to the love you make. 
In the chapters this week, Fields talked about that concept of many religions known as oneness. And this song is perfect to lead us into the message. It's called, We Are One in the Spirit. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity will this day be restored. And we'll know we're one family by our love, by our love. Yes, we'll know. CSL music team and Joanne Bewald for reading today. We're on week three of our 12-week series on Chop Wood Carry Water, which is a book by Rick Fields. But each week is independent, so today we're talking about something that we all have in our lives. Relationships. You know, relationships seem to be the most joyful as well as the most challenging parts of our lives. So these two chapters this week give us a lot of insights about the joys and the challenges. But let's begin with our question of the week. What is the one choice you can make today to accept the interconnectedness of all things, to know you define the quality of your relationships, and to discover your own spirituality through your relationships. One more time. What is the one choice that you can make today to accept the interconnectedness of all things, to know you define the quality of your relationships, and to discover your own spirituality through your relationships? Like it or not, what our philosophy tells us about oneness is true. We're all interconnected. And our seeking to be in a relationship with others is the outpicturing of that interconnectedness. As you heard in the reading, life is a relationship and we are all in a perfect relationship with everything that makes up our lives at this very moment. To feel this interconnectedness with all things and to know that we are part of the universe is one of the great joys of the spiritual life. And it is our intimate relationships that provide the greatest opportunity to learn this lesson. I know I don't always feel in perfect relationship with everything in my life. 
And we do learn the lesson of being a part of a universe through our relationship highs and lows. Brickfield was absolutely accurate when he says that relationships are the great challenge of life. He does speak of the two cornerstone ideas related to relationships that show up in most spiritual writings. And the first one, of course, is oneness. We're intertwined on our common journey on this earth. The second is Individually, we are whole, perfect, and complete. All we need is already in us, right here, right now. So where's the challenge in that? As I see it, sure, I know we're intertwined. I even know that when I'm willing to open my heart and send out love to someone, that at some level, they receive it. Yet, letting go of my identity and my ideas and my understanding of the oneness is not something that I find easy to live 24-7. I know who I am, how I show up in the world, what it is that makes me joyous and peaceful and calm, and that's not necessarily what makes some other human feel the same way. So it's a paradox that we walk on this planet as separate entities and also naturally seek to be in relationship with others to feel complete. Fields calls this interpersonal fusion. It's an interesting term. We seek to be in a relationship, to be in families and clans, and actually, most of us are uncomfortable being alone for long periods of time. It probably explains why teenagers are so prone to peer approval, and most likely why the pandemic was so difficult on so many people. We seek connection, even as we seek to define our interconnectedness. Anne Morrow Lindbergh wrote this, for we are actually pioneers trying to find a new path through the maze of tradition, convention, and dogma. Our efforts are part of the struggle to mature the conception of relationships between men and women. In fact, all relationships. In such a life, every advancing understanding has value. Every step, even a tentative one, counts. And while seeking connection, we also find our relationships to be challenging. There was a saint who was visiting a river to take a bath, and he found a group of family members on the banks, and they were shouting in anger at each other. He turned to the disciples, smiled, and asked, why do people shout in anger at each other? The disciples thought about it for a while, and one of them said, because we lose our calm, we shout. But why should you shout when the other person is standing right next to you? You can as well tell him what you have to say in a soft manner, said the saint. The disciples gave some other answers, but none really were satisfying. And finally, the saint explained this. When two people are angry at each other, their hearts distance a lot. And to cover that distance, they must shout to be able to hear each other. The angrier they are, the stronger they have to shout to hear each other to cover that great distance. You notice when people fall in love, said the saint, that they don't shout at each other. They talk softly because their hearts are very close. The distance between them is very small, possibly even non-existence. And the saint continued, when they love each other even more, what happens? They don't even speak, or perhaps they speak in a whisper as they get closer to each other in love. And finally, they don't even need to whisper. They can just look at each other 
and that's all that's needed. So when two people are close and when they're in love, there's no shouting. So he said to his disciples, so when you argue, don't let your hearts get distant. Don't say words that distance each other even more. Or else there'll come a day when the distance is so great that you can't find the path to return. One thing our reading made clear today is that there are many ways that we're in relationships with each other and with the divine. And while Fields talks a lot about couple relationships, what each of us know at some level of our being is that our relationship with ourself is what truly defines our joy and the sadness that we find. Relationships cannot thrive if our relationship with ourself is not thriving. It seems like knowing that we define the quality of our relationships is a bit of a, both a blessing and a curse, right? I was at the CSL convention this week. It was wonderful. I had a great time. I learned a lot. And there were people there from all over the globe. And Chris Michaels, author of Your Soul's Assignment, was a speaker. He talked about growing up in the generation of born to be wild. I know that generation, flower children, groupies. We were a creative group who knew what we wanted and we went for it. It didn't mean it was always right or even easy. Yet we had great passion behind what we desired. And as the song of the time went, we were born free. Personally, I never mastered being as free as the wind blows or as free as the grass grows, but I do believe that I learned to follow my heart. In Michael's talk, he asked what the generation would look like if instead of being born to be wild, we were born to be mild. If that were our theme, when we had our dreams and we lined things out and there were things that we were passionate about, we'd just throw them out in favor of being mild, of not rocking the boat. So think about what you want in life right now. Do you go for it or do you throw it away? Are you born to be wild or mild? That's a really great question with our dreams and with our relationships. There's a Zen quote. If you walk, just walk. If you sit, just sit. But whatever you do, don't wobble. The advice from that saying is actually sound and quite simple to understand, yet it's difficult to put in practice. What, what makes us wobble? Distractions from being our true self. We're constantly being pulled in thousands of different directions, often with our focus going by the wayside. The theme of our conference this year was embrace the now. Embrace the now. Not only is it important to be present in the moment when you do something, but it's also important that you zone in as much as you can, that you embrace that now moment. You empty your mind of the past and of the future and merely think about what is being done right here and right now. If it's time to work, work. If it's time to rest, rest. Imagine if we could develop that monk-like focus and eliminate distractions that cause us to wobble. Do you think we would learn to give weight to our intentions and do exactly what we know we've come here to do and to be? There was another speaker who offered this Zen quote, 
know that when you put your foot out, the road moves up to meet it. So be born to be wild. Put your foot out there. Be wild, not mild. And know that the road is going to move up to meet it. You know, there's that saying in our philosophy that when we go for something, the whole entire universe is behind us, that God is always for us. That's what it means to be wild about our dreams. And another important aspect of relationships is that they really do allow us to discover our own spirituality. You know, we're here in these human forms, and so we see God through other humans. If we look at the term spirituality, connect it to things of the spirit, then of course our relationships are spiritual in nature. And it makes sense for us to take the advice of Zen master John Buxhausen, a former Zen monk, who recommends that we make our couple relationships part of our spiritual practice. And I don't think he's talking just about couple relationships. I think he's talking really about all of our relationships. Here's what he says. In practical terms, this means learning to identify and mutually solve problems as they arise rather than avoiding them or discounting their significance. At the conference, I went to this great session called From Conflict to Connection. And I want to share just a little bit about it because the process is really helpful in solving problems in our relationships so that we can stay in spiritual alignment. Before you start the process, though, there's something that you need to do. You need to think of a place or something that makes you happy and joyful. Now, they recommend it not be a person or a pet because if you're upset with them and you need this process, it won't work. So for me, it's being around the ocean or watching dolphins play in the ocean. So right now, just think of something that makes you joyful and happy. Okay, so set that aside for a minute. When a conflict arises, here's what you do. The first thing you do is become heart-focused, and that just means settling into your heart and focusing on your heart. Focusing on that place within you where love resides. The second thing you do is some heart-breathing. Now, sometimes you want to just put your hand over your heart and just feel the heartbeat. Just allow yourself to feel your heart beating. And the third step is to go into that heart of appreciation. And here's when you bring to mind that thing that you just remembered that brings you joy and happiness. So think about that thing right now. And when you're in that state, you ask the divine this question, what is it that I need to know? And when you get an answer, be willing to act on it. I invite you to try that the next time you're trying to resolve a conflict or the next time you feel like shouting. Oh, and by the way, if you begin any remarks or feedback that you have for your partner or friend by thinking, not necessarily saying out loud, I'd rather be happy than right now, it's a lot easier. Sometimes we get so stuck in wanting to be right that we let go of our happiness and our joy. Antoine de Saint-Exubery said this, Love does not consist in gauging at each other, but in looking outward together in the same direction. And Plato wrote that love is the pursuit of the whole. 
Are those things not what we say in our philosophy? When we're willing to resolve conflicts in our relationships and look outward together in the same direction, to see each other as whole, those conflicts fall by the wayside. So how do you see wholeness in yourself or in someone else? Because if we can't see it in ourselves, we're not going to be able to see it in someone else. Part of this information on relationships is about recognizing that the most important relationship you have in your life is the one that you have with yourself. If you can't see yourself as well, if you can't accept the wholeness of who you are, then you're not loving yourself. And you can't give someone else love or peace or calm or joy if you don't have it within yourself. Fields wrote that over and over, the Dalai Lama emphasized the practice of altruism. And the Dalai Lama told us this, the purpose of life is to increase the warm heart. Think of other people. Serve other people sincerely. No cheating. If you can, help others. If you cannot do that, at least do not harm them. And this applies to yourself as well as others. If you find yourself feeling less than on any level, help yourself. That might mean writing an affirmation. It might mean engaging in some practitioner session or in a meditation. It might even mean calling a friend and just having a conversation about it. And if you can't do one of those things, at least take the Dalai Lama's advice and do no harm to yourself. In other words, do the best that you can do and let it go. Let go of that feeling. Don't wallow in it. And don't wobble in your spiritual practice around your relationship with your inner true self. So a little boy and girl were playing together and the boy had his collection of marbles and the little girl had several sweets with her. The boy told the little girl that he would give him all the marbles in exchange for her sweets. And so the little girl decided to agree. Now, while the little girl wasn't looking, the boy kept the biggest and the most beautiful marble and he set it aside and he gave all the rest of them to the little girl. The little girl, however, gave all of her sweets just as she had agreed. And that night, the little girl slept peacefully. Guess what? The little boy wasn't sleeping quite so good because he was wondering if the little girl had hidden the best sweet from him the way he had hidden his best marble. You know, when we don't give 100% in a relationship, you always keep doubting if the other person is giving their 100%. And it doesn't matter if it's a love relationship, a friendship, an employer-employee relationship. We have to give 100% of who we are if we want to sleep peacefully. Eric Fromm, a German social psychologist, psychoanalyst, so sociologist, humanistic philosopher, and democratic socialist, and also the author of The Art of Loving, wrote this. Love is not primarily a relationship to a specific person. It is an attitude, an orientation of character, which determines the relatedness of the person to the world as a whole, not toward one object of love. If I truly love one person, I love all persons. I love the world. I love life. If I can say to somebody else, I love you, I must be able to say, 
I love in you everybody. I love through you the world. I love in you also myself. And therapist Books Bossen counts on his clients to do this. Make the relationship an explicit part of their spiritual practice. In practical terms, this means learning to identify and mutually solve problems as they arise rather than avoiding them or discounting their significance. I love the anonymous quote, the meeting of two personalities is like the contact of chemical substances. If there is any reaction, both are transformed. So say I love you to yourself and others. Say yes to the flow of possibilities for our spiritual growth through our relationships. And allow resistance to conflict to fall away and learn to connect. So in summary, decide to make your relationships a priority. Accept that we are interconnected. And remember to whisper and have your heart be close to others. Know that you define the quality of your relationships. Ask yourself every once in a while, am I born to be wild or born to be mild? and release those distractions that make you wobble. Discover your spirituality through your relationships. Try the heart focus, heart breathing, and heart appreciation technique to move from conflict to connection. And learn to make the purpose of life to increase the warm heart. So here's your affirmation for the week. How is it that I so easily and willingly make the choice today to accept the interconnectedness of all things, to know I define the quality of my relationships, and to discover my own spirituality through my relationships? And your challenge for the week? Make a conscious choice to embrace the now. To be wild in your living, not mild. And to look outward together with others. Remember the words of Plato. Love is the pursuit of the whole. Let's pray. So we just take a deep nourishing breath. We move into that heart. Focusing on all the love that we have to give. Being wild about all the love that we have to give. Knowing that God is love and that we each are love. What I know to be the truth is that each of us has many types of relationships in our lives and that we are striving consistently to have those relationships go deeper, to be more meaningful, that we are looking at the world through lenses of acceptance and love and non-judgment. They were looking out into the world together So I am grateful, so grateful to have the relationships of this community, to be able to see God and know God 
through other people. Hmm. So it's from that gratitude that I just release these words into the law of mind, spirit, and action, knowing the truth that right where we are, God is. Right where we are, love is. And that God has already said yes. So I can just let it be. Say amen. And we can affirm it together. And so it is. So I want to take this opportunity to be grateful for all of the donations that are being sent in in one form or another and to recognize that that is allowing us to search for a place, possibly even to do just one service a month as a hybrid where people can come and we could also broadcast it. Hmm. So there's many things in the fire right now and I hope that you will be wild about supporting them with your time, with your talents, with your treasures. Thank you. Enjoy the offertory song. From the love of your spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal, bless, and prosper. Does good work in the world and returns to me, multiplied abundantly. From the love of your spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal, bless, and prosper. It does good work. You can find all of the information for donating at our website at cslsoutheastla.org. You can use the donate button there, or you can use Zella or Venmo at 225-287-8887. You can text your amount to 1-225-320-5100. Or you can mail your donation to CSL Southeast Louisiana, care of Reverend Larry Marie Heil, 445 Magnolia Wood Avenue, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70808. We thank you for your tithes and donations, and we appreciate the fact that you are giving gifts that are flowing out to everyone we touch. So our offertory music is a great summary of what it is we need to do in order to have our relationships thrive. And that's give yourself to love. Before the sunrise 
to watch the day begin. I always knew I'd find you, though I never did know how. And like sunshine on a cloudy day, you stand before me now. You must give yourself to love. If love is what Our series is about family. I hope you're enjoying this journey to enlightenment by looking at how we can embrace that idea of chopping wood and carrying water. And next week, we're going to be looking at how our families teach us to embrace both our families of origin and our chosen families. I hope you'll join us. Thank you for joining us today. I invite you to like us on Facebook at Center for Spiritual Living, Southeast Louisiana. And please follow us on our YouTube channel at CSLSELA. And it's just about time to join in our community time, which is a live discussion that follows the service every Sunday at 1145 a.m. You have a little bit of time to go get a cup of coffee or some tea and then dial into our conference line. The number is 540-792-0192. And the participation code is 475-220. We hope you'll join us. And so in closing, remember, Disney claims to be the happiest place on earth, but we at the Center for Spiritual Living in Southeast Louisiana know that we are the most joyful. So until we meet again, may you be wrapped in the arms of love and kindness. And may you remember that our relationships are a spiritual practice. And when we're open-minded and aware and mindful of all of life. And when we whisper to each other from our hearts, we feel very much alive. Sing alive,